Hello everyone. Today we'll be solving Cambridge IGCSE Chemistry Paper 6 Alternative to Practical May June 2021 Paper 62. Question number 1. Barium sulfate is an insoluble salt. Barium sulfate can be made by reacting excess aqueous sodium sulfate with aqueous barium chloride. Sodium sulfate plus barium chloride produces sodium chloride and barium sulfate. A student made a sample of barium sulfate using the following steps. Step number one, aqueous sodium sulfate was added to aqueous barium chloride and then it was tired, the mixture was tired and then the solid barium sulfate was removed from the mixture by filtration. Name the items of apparatus A and B. So we can see A is the apparatus that we are using for styring. So this is the glass rod. And B is the conical flask that is holding that particular uh, filter funnel. So B is conical flask. Part B. Name the process shown in step 3. So step 3. In step 3 we can see filtration. Part C. The general name for the solid in step 3 is residue. State the general name for the solution obtained from the process in step 3. So uh, the solid that we are getting, solid is called residue. Alright, so state the general name for the solution obtained from the process in step 3. The solution will be called the filtrate. Part D. Two more steps, 4 and 5, are needed to obtain a pure sample of barium sulfate. In each of these steps, something is removed from the residue. State what is done in each of the steps 4 and 5 and identify the substance removed from the barium sulfate. In step number 4, we can wash the residue with water to remove any sodium sulfate impurities or sodium chloride impurities that was uh, there. And then in step 5, we can dry it. We, the main objective is to remove the water. Question number two. A student investigated the volume of gas made when sodium carbonate react with dilute hydrochloric acid. Five experiments were carried out using the apparatus shown. Rubber delivery tube, there is a bung. All right, then there is boiling tube, which is holding the reagents. And then the measuring cylinder is upside down and it's clamped. Inverted 100 cm cube measuring cylinder, trough, and then there is water. Experiment 1. Using a measuring cylinder, 16 cm cube of dilute hydrochloric acid was poured into a boiling tube. The apparatus was set up as shown in the diagram. The bung was removed from the boiling tube. 2.5 gram of sodium carbonate was added to the boiling tube and the bung was immediately replaced. When no more gas was being collected, the volume of gas in the measuring cylinder was measured. The experiment one was repeated using 14 cm cube of dilute hydrochloric acid instead of 16 cm cube. Then the experiment two was repeated using 12 cm cube instead of 14. Experiment three was repeated using 10 cm cube instead of 12. Four was repeated using 6 cm cube of dilute hydrochloric acid instead of 10 cm cube. Okay, use the information in the description of the experiment and inverted measuring cylinder diagrams to complete the table. So volume of the hydrochloric acid in the first experiment was 16 cm cube and in the second experiment was 14 then 12 and then it was 10 and then it was 6 cm cube. Now volume of gas that has been collected. The volume of gas that has been collected now since we are reading this particular measuring cylinder in an inverted direction as you can see. So 55 and then we can see 56. So the reading is 56. And then 40 towards here so the reading is 49. 40 towards here 44. 37. 25, 26. 26. Write a suitable scale on the y-axis and plot the results on the experiment 1 to 5 on the grid. Draw a straight line of west feet. 
volume of gas collected and volume of hydrochloric acid used volume of gas collected now for the volume of gas collected we must see what is the maximum amount of gas that is collected as you can see the maximum amount of gas that is collected is 56 cm cube and the lowest amount is 26 so we can go for each divisions as 10 20 then 30 40 50 and that gives us a total of 60 cm cube of gas now on the scale volume of a dilute hydrochloric acid the in the scale of volume of a dilute hydrochloric acid we can go for all right so 6 cm cube is equals to 26 so 6 cm cube is equals to 26 so the first point is going to appear 26 over here okay uh, and then 10 37 then 12 44 then 14 49 and then 16 56 now the question says from your graph deduce the volume of gas that would be collected if 7 cm cube of dilute hydrochloric acid was used show clearly on the grid how you worked out your answer whenever the question says show clearly how you worked out your answer that means in a graph we will have to show extrapolation so this is the 7 cm cube and then the volume of gas that we would collect would be 29 so it will be 29 cm cube part 2 the volume of gas made per cm cube of dilute hydrochloric acid can be calculated using the equation shown volume of gas per cm cube of acid volume of gas collected in cm cube divided by volume of acid in cm cube use this equation and your answer to c1 to calculate the volume of gas made per cm cube of dilute hydrochloric acid since our uh, gas volume collected is 29 then we can divide it by 7 which was the volume of hydrochloric acid used to obtain that and 29 divided by 7 the answer is 4.14 part d the bung was removed and then replaced immediately after the sodium carbonate was added to the boiling tube explain why the bung must be replaced immediately after the sodium carbonate is added to the boiling tube well so the bung prevents the gas from escaping Part 2. Explain how the apparatus could be altered so that the bung does not have to be removed. You may draw a diagram to explain your answer. So basically what we can do is we can um, make a, you know, we can, we can like place a reagent tube inside the boiling tube, which we can then shake, all right, to start the reaction. Part E. State one advantage of using a buret rather than a measuring cylinder to measure the volume of dilute hydrochloric acid. Now you see, buret is more accurate. So measuring cylinder is not as accurate as buret. Part F. In experiments 1 to 5, the sodium carbonate was in excess. Sketch on the grid, the graph, you would expect if all the experiments were repeated using dilute hydrochloric acid of half the concentration if half the concentration is used then we would get volume half quantity so for volume of dilute hydrochloric acid at 6 instead of getting at 26 we would get 13 for 10 instead of getting at uh, 37 we would get half of 37 so 18.5 for 12 we would get instead of 44 we would get 22 for 14 instead of 49 we would get 
24.5 for 16 instead of 56 we would get half of it which is uh, 28 part 3 solution G and solution H were analyzed solution G was divided into three equal portions in three test tubes sodium hydroxide was added drop wise and then in excess to the first portion of solution G white precipitate which did not dissolve in excess when sodium hydroxide is given and white precipitate forms it can be either aluminium it can be either calcium or it can be zinc however zinc dissolves in excess so zinc cancelled it can be either aluminium or calcium next about 1 cm cube of dilute nitric acid followed by a few drops of aqua silver nitrate were added to the second portion of the solution G, yellow precipitate. Dilute nitric acid followed by silver nitrate is a test for halide and having yellow precipitate means that there is iodide present. About 10 cm cube of aqueous hydrogen peroxide were, was added to the third portion of the solution. The gas produced was tested. When hydrogen peroxide is added and gas is produced, that is a indication of oxygen has been produced. The mixture became brown. All right, the mixture became brown because in the iodide, we are getting iodine. So I, because of the iodine that we are producing and uh, uh, the gas relights a glowing splint, that means that confirms oxygen. So identify the gas produced in test three. Definitely that is oxygen now the question says use the results in test 1 and 2 to identify solution G now to identify solution G all right it can be calcium iodide the reason why we came to conclusion about calcium iodide because calcium is the only salt that does not dissolve in excess sodium hydroxide even aluminium dissolves in excess sodium hydroxide so that is cancelled as well Test on solid H. Solid H was hydrated copper to sulfate. Complete the expected observations. About half of solid H was placed in a boiling tube and heated using Bunsen burner. And the observation was, so if we place half of solid H, which is copper sulfate, in a boiling tube and we heat it with a Bunsen burner, then we would see, because it is hydrated, we would see water vapor. So we would see uh, white fumes would be given off which would condense at the mouth of the tube. And first of all, the solid, you know, and also a solid, the solid is uh, hydrated copper sulfate has a color of blue. It will become white. Part D. A flame test was carried out on solid H. Now, observation. Because we have copper ions present, the observation will be blue-green. The remaining solid H was placed in a boiling tube. About 10 cm cube of distilled water was added to the boiling tube. The tube was shaken to dissolve solid H and form solution H. Solution H was divided into two approximately equal portions in two test tubes. Part E. Aqueous ammonia was added dropwise in excess to the first portion of solid H. Observation. Now, first of all, solution H was divided into two approximate uh, equal portions. Now, solution H contains copper 2 plus ion. If we give it ammonia first few dropwise, so we will get light blue precipitate. But when we put in excess, then the light blue precipitate would dissolve and it would form a deep blue solution.
F. Approximately 1 cm cube of dilute nitric acid followed by a few drops of aqueous barium nitrate were added to the second portion of the solution H. So what would be the observation? Now when we add nitric acid followed by an aqueous barium nitrate, we are trying to test for sulfate. This is a classic test for sulfate presence of sulfate. Since this is hydrated copper to sulfate and there is sulfate present, so the observation will be white precipitate. Question number four. The last question. The mineral epsomite contains hydrated magnesium sulfate. When epsomite is heated strongly, it loses water and eventually becomes anhydrous magnesium sulfate. Plan an investigation to find the percentage by mass of water in a sample of epsomite. Your plan should include how you would calculate the percentage by mass of water in epsomite. You have access to common laboratory apparatus. So at first what we will have to do is we'll have to take like 5 gram of that epsomite mineral in a crucible. Then we will heat that particular crucible strongly using a Bunsen burner and then reweigh that residue that is left in the crucible. Then we would heat that particular residue back again in, a, in the same crucible and reweigh until the mass stops changing. I mean the mass lost, it stops changing. Now and then after that we are going to calculate mass of water lost by the original mass minus the final mass and then we would calculate the percentage by into the mass uh, 100 into mass of water divided by original mass. All right, that's how we're going to get the percentage of water in that particular epsomite. That's all for the today's video. Uh, thank you for watching. And please, if you like the video, then give it a like. Share the video with your friends, which may help them. And subscribe to the channel so that you get updates of videos like this all the time. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.